everyone, and welcome to My Brain is a Wonderland, a podcast for neurodivergent women and the people who love them. Welcome back, everybody. This is the third episode of My Brain is a Wonderland, and we are going to be talking today about how I, as a neurodivergent woman with autism and ADHD, prepared for a major hurricane hitting where I am living and how that went, and how I dealt with the stress of all of that, and it kind of happening all so quickly. I just want to preface this uh, episode. I'm not going to be discussing, you know, horrible things that happened, or anything like that, the tragedy that was Hurricane Ian when it hit Florida. I wasn't, in the end, personally affected in a way that was really bad and negative, but I just want you to know if you have a trigger warning, a trigger around this, around natural disasters maybe, or if you had a family member who was involved, I just want to prepare you that I'm going to be talking about the lead up to Hurricane Ian in Florida this summer 2022 and how I dealt with that. So with that, I want to start at the beginning, and I'm going to talk about this in a way that really explains all of what happened, the build-up. So if you're from Florida or a place that gets hit by hurricanes a lot, you might feel like I'm over-explaining, but for a lot of people out there who haven't lived through a hurricane, don't know what it's like to live during a hurricane season, I think this will be really interesting for people to hear. So what happened was we were in the middle of hurricane season. Hurricane season in Florida runs from, I believe, ooh, I want to say June 1st through the end of November. So it goes longer than you think. Technically, there could be a hurricane on Thanksgiving. And the worst time of year, I believe the worst month is either September or October. Something to do with all of the heat in the ocean building up. And that's when it is the worst for the worst hurricanes. You get the most, they're stronger, and it really just is you know, you have no idea where they're going to hit. There's lots of models, and I'm going to talk about that, but really they cannot say at the beginning of the season, well, you're going to have this many hit Florida, this many hit Louisiana. They have no idea. They do make a prediction at the beginning of the season of how many hurricanes in general they think will form, and it's generally accurate, I think, but hurricanes don't always necessarily hit anywhere close to you or become a thing other than a cat one in the ocean. So it may feel like there aren't many around when actually there are. So what happened is it was September, which was the big, heavy part of the season. We hadn't really had anything. Um, we hadn't had there, things had been forming in the ocean and coming across the Gulf and blah, 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 but nothing had hit Florida, nothing had come close, and uh, we were always supposed to be prepared, but nothing had come yet. So in the days leading up to the hurricane, I would say, I want to say you get a week or more, maybe a week and a half from when it first kind of forms in the Atlantic Ocean and you're told, you know, they make predictions on this is 90% going to become a hurricane or form in, you know, it's a disturbance in the ocean, in the weather. And they tell you, you know, 90% or whatever, it's going to become a hurricane. And then it does in the next day or so. And so the week leading up to that weekend, I had been watching this storm form and start moving. And then they start putting a cone on where it's going to go. It's a path that is a cone-shaped path going towards whatever track they think it's going to make. And it usually comes through the Caribbean, so unless it's more north and just hits Florida right away, but it usually comes through the Caribbean, then hits, you know, Florida, Georgia, or it hits, you know, Louisiana or Texas or whatever. And so this one, um, the cone started to form 
And it looked like where I live in the Tampa Bay was directly in the center of the cone. Now, there's lots of jokes about Tampa Bay. The last time we were direct hit by a hurricane was 1935. They say it's because we're on an ancient burial ground and they protect us. Yeah, okay. Um, really, I think it's just because we're nestled in on the West Coast. So a hurricane would have to make a hard right turn directly into us. And that just doesn't tend to happen. I mean, it hasn't. So we're pretty protected from it. And also people say if you're in the center of the cone when it first is showing, it's going to shift. So you're not going to be in the center at the end. It's a model projection. They look at all these models from different experts and put them together for an average, basically. And so when this started happening, I started freaking out. I'm going to be honest with you. I am English. In England, we don't have natural disasters like that. In London, you know, you don't have a hurricane. You don't have earthquakes. We don't have storms that flood in London, you know. I'd never dealt with anything like this. I'd been living in Florida at this point. I'd lived in North Florida for five years before I'd moved to Oregon for three and a half, then come back to Florida. But I hadn't lived, I think I lived through a Cat 1 in North Florida, which felt like nothing. We were in the center of the state, so, you know, it it wasn't coming off the ocean. It was fine. But I was very anxious then, I remember. But this would be, I'd lived through a tropical storm down here in the south in Tampa Bay, but this would be the first real hurricane. And so my husband is seventh generation Floridian. So his family knows they've lived through hurricanes, they've lived through it all. So I'm texting his mom and dad, right? And just kind of feeling it out, just letting them know I'm freaking the freak out. But not in a way that says, hey, I'm freaking out, in a way that they know me so well now that they know when I'm texting that I'm freaking out. If I'm, their son, my husband doesn't do this. He's not messaging them asking about the hurricane. They know I'm worried. And they made jokes about it, honestly. They made jokes and that comforted me because I trust them especially in this regard to hurricanes. So that was okay. I thought, okay, this isn't so bad. You know, we'll just wait and see. And that's what you're supposed to do because you don't really know where it's going to hit until the end, until right before it hits. It can do a twisty turny thing. You just don't know. So that Saturday, we trimmed all of our trees just in preparation. We were overdue on that. And I was still... I was freaking out pretty bad still. My anxiety was through the roof and I just start, this is what I do. I start going to the worst thing and thinking about what it's going to be and going through every scenario that's terrible that goes all to the house floods. We both die. The dogs die. Um, the house floods and we swim out. And then we, I mean, I had Armageddon deep impact type volcano. Anyone, anyone here, any millennials know these movies? Absolutely just thinking of the worst, craziest thing in my mind. When really the worst thing even would have been that we evacuate to North Florida where my husband's family home is. We did all that. We got the house ready. And that Sunday, I texted my husband's parents again and said, what do you think? We're not sure if we're going to drive out or not. We're not sure if we're leaving. We're going to decide tomorrow. We're going to wait and see. And they both messaged back, his mom and his dad, and said, if it looks the way it's looking right now, you need to get out. They didn't mince words, and they said, you need to get out. That pushed my anxiety through the floor. I mean, because I knew that they knew what they were talking about, and if they were serious, we needed to get serious. So I went to my husband. He realized, because his parents were serious too, that it was a serious thing. 
that Monday, we decided, okay, we're going to drive out Monday. That's what we're going to do. We're going to drug up the dogs, sedate them, because they've never done this before. They've never, you know, we've moved houses once since we've gotten them. They've never had to do anything like this. It was going to be a two and a half hour drive. We were, you know, I say we, me, I was freaking out. I don't know if my husband really was, but I was freaking out. So that Monday, we were going to drive out that night. We realized we need to get sandbags. We need to get something. We have hurricane impact windows, so we don't have to worry too much about boarding up. We had neighbors who were boarding up their windows. It was really scary. And so the city was giving out 10 free sandbags per family. So we go to this sandbag line, and it's like a four-hour line or something. So we go and get sedatives for the dogs and come back to see if it's smaller. And it does seem like the line is shorter. So we get in this line and we're in the line for, I think it was two hour, two and a half hours in the end, I think. And we get to the end of the line and this line just sitting there sent me over the edge. My adrenaline kicked in. This is what actually happens when I need to get something done. It's not anxiety that's powering me. My adrenaline kicks in and I have this little flutter in my chest because that's the adrenaline making my heart race like crazy. And I'm just able to get it done. And even though I'm freaking out on the inside, I kind of just get stuff done. And then I'll collapse at the end and maybe cry and just be exhausted. But I just get stuff done. And so my adrenaline was through the roof. It was, and I didn't realize until, here's what happened. We get to the end of this sandbag line. And we're supposed to leave that night, so we need sandbags now. And we didn't think to go buy any. We thought they'd already be out, so we're in this free line. And all of a sudden, the cop who's been manning this line in his car with the lights on at the head of the line just drives away. Turns off his lights and drives away. And me and my husband are like, yeah, that's not good. So I get out of the car and run to the workers to see what they're doing. And they basically tell me that they're done for the day and we can grab any sandbags on the ground. So I grab four waterlogged sandbags, two per hand. I am five foot six, healthy, but not, I don't bodybuild or anything. And I carried these four sandbags a block down the street to the car. So my husband sees me and I'm shouting to him and other people in the line, just grab what you can. And my husband sees me and goes, well, and he said to me later, he's thinking, okay, if she grabs four, I can at least get four, maybe five. So he goes and grabs as many as he can. He ends up grabbing three and he cannot carry them. Okay, these are waterlogged heavy sandbags. They're very heavy. And we realized later that my adrenaline was so high that I was able to carry these bags. It's like those stories you hear of people lifting cars because their adrenaline is through the roof. That is where I was at. I was living on a different plane of adrenaline existence. It was insane. So we get these bags, we end up with seven bags, get them back to the house, drug up the dogs, and we get them into the car to do this two and a half hour drive to my husband's family home in North Florida. Please bear in mind, this all happened, really the reality of it, in less than 24 hours. We were texting Sunday afternoon night, decided we were going to drive and we had to be prepared. I had a hurricane pack, but all just realized that we were so woefully prepared, ill prepared for this in the end, even though we had a hurricane pack, it just didn't prepare us for what we ended up having to do. So we drive, I'm in the back with one dog, my husband's in the front with the other dog driving. It's a two and a half hour drive, it's dark, and they're quite sleepy. So that was good. And that made me feel good because we'd never done that before, the most we'd ever driven was to the vet and back, which is not far. So we get to my husband's family home, and I lived there for five years when we lived in North Florida. I've known this house for 15 years. I've known his family for 16 years. It's very comfortable for me. That's not an issue. That being said, being there with the dogs in a whole new experience was so difficult for me. The feeling of I didn't know how the dogs were going to react. I didn't like that I wasn't in control. We were constantly, there were other dogs in the house, so we had to segregate all of the dogs. 
and then bring the dogs out one at a time to go in the yard alone um, because it was just too crazy to introduce dogs at that time. You couldn't do it. And I was just, one of my dogs, I think probably both of them, but one of them is very anxious and she feeds off my anxiety. So if I'm anxious, she knows that and I think doesn't respond well or tries to protect me and things like that. And so me and her in this house was not a good combo. We were just both freaking out. She freaked me out because she was anxious all the time. I was freaked out because I was worried about the house, about this hurricane hitting. It was just not fun. Another thing is that I love my husband's family and they are amazing and they really do understand me and who I am and love me for it. But they do not understand my negativity. I come at, I've spoken about this before, I think, I come at everything with a negative slant. I tend to be, um, I tend to be a bit of a comedian and comedy often comes from a place of sadness or reflecting on something that was difficult. And so, you know, I'm very stressed out. Um, They're trying to put a positive spin on it. And my spin is just always negative, always like, this is terrible. This is not good. I'm really, you know, and they do a really great job actually of just dealing with me and just accepting me for who I am. And um, they are always trying to put a positive vibe on it, even though that drives me crazy when they do that because they always are trying to just flip it positive when I'm like, no, this is negative, this isn't fun, but I love them for it. And so we were dealing with that, having the dogs there, and me just being very upset about the whole thing and anxious. We got there Monday night, we ended up staying till Friday. In the end, the hurricane turned several miles south, and if you watch the news at all, it was absolutely catastrophic for where it hit in South Florida on the West Coast, and if it had hit Tampa Bay in that way, like they thought it was going to, it would have also been catastrophic for us. So we are so grateful, and my heart goes out to those who experienced that, because that must have been awful. And so we were, the hurricane hit Thursday, we spent all the time tracking the hurricane. I mean, If there's anyone else out there who gets obsessed with the weather, I've done that before. I can really get obsessed with just looking at the radars and every report and on the Twitter for the National Weather Service, I get obsessed. And that's all I did. Monday through Thursday, we were shut in Dan's childhood, my Dan's my husband, in his childhood bedroom with our two dogs while they're barking and freaking out. We're trying to keep them sedated. I'm not sedated, but I'm trying to say stay sedate. And it was just a lot. And so finally we realized the hurricane isn't going to hit. Our neighbors didn't evacuate. So we were able to talk to them through text and they kind of filled us in what was going on. And we ended up driving back that Friday morning, which was another ordeal. I'd wanted to drive at night because the dogs tend to get distracted by all the things that they see. And I'm just such an anxious driver anyway. I don't like to drive. I don't really drive. I'm a terrible passenger. I gasp all the time. I have sensory issues. I don't like speed. I don't like big vehicles around me. And I don't like being in the um, car with the dogs. I'm always frantic about are the windows locked or the doors locked. I'm afraid they're going to escape. I'm afraid we're going to be in an accident. So that was very stressful going home, Um, another two and a half hours drive home, but they actually did great. And what it did is it's one of those things where when you push yourself to do it, you realize that what the reality is, and actually this time the reality was not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. So that was good. And we got home and the dogs were super happy to be home. I was super happy to be home. and. We were so grateful that we didn't have to deal with more than that, that we didn't have to deal with a caved-in roof, trees down. I mean, there were branches everywhere. One of our trees almost came down into the backyard, but we were so lucky. And like I said, my heart goes out to anyone who had to deal with this, neurodivergent or not. It was horrible to even prepare for. And to have had to have lived through the reality of a Cat 4 or 5 hurricane actually hitting. So that's what ended up hitting 
just would have been awful. I, the numbers, as I've mentioned, I mentioned a cat one, a cat one through to a cat five. A cat four and five is catastrophic. Um, buildings are sometimes, newer buildings are equipped sometimes to, are now it's the law to be equipped, I believe, to a cat four, not necessarily a cat five, and they're based on strength of winds. And I believe it was only a few um, miles per hour off of a cat five when it hit Florida, and it was devastating and absolutely anxiety inducing for me. Um, I really, like I said, feel for anyone who's had to go through anything like this, any kind of natural disaster. I lived in Oregon. I've lived in California. I know the fires out there are just awful. The stories that come out of there, how quickly it happens. And um, I hope that everyone stays safe out there and is prepared. It's the best thing you can do is just be prepared. And if you're able to do a dry run of whatever you need to do, because that's what I ended up doing, that's what this ended up being, was a dry run for the real thing. That if it happens again, we now know how to leave with our dogs quickly, efficiently, what works, what doesn't work. I know how I'm going to feel, the timing, everything. And so if you can do a dry run of what you need to do, I definitely recommend that, even if it's a drive to the shelter with your pets or a pack up of it, you know, can you grab everything and you have, you know, we didn't have clothes, you know, we had to pack clothes. We realized our hurricane pack had no clothes in it. So now we put in our hurricane pack, basic t-shirts, a couple of pants, you know, plain underwear, because if you really need to leave that quickly, you won't have clothes. And when we ended up leaving anyway, you should have seen in my bag, guys, I had, I think it's the middle of summer in Florida. I think I had two sweaters, you know, a pair of pajama pants, one pair of jeans. I didn't have enough underwear. I mean, I was so hopped up on adrenaline, I grabbed the weirdest things to take with me. So I really recommend just running, a, doing a dry run and getting prepared as much as you can for something like this, whether it's a hurricane, an earthquake, a flash flood, a wildfire, whatever is in your area, a tornado, you know. Do what you can now, and I know you want to procrastinate about it, but I'm telling you, it does make it easier, even if it's going to be difficult. That's my story about living through almost a Cat 4 or 5 hurricane hitting. I hope there was some good advice here for you. And again, if you'd like to reach out to me and connect, I'd love to hear from you. My brain is a wonderland pod on Instagram and TikTok. My email is mybrainisawonderlandpod at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love some feedback and if you have any questions. And if you liked what you're listening to, please go to wherever you listen to your podcasts. I'm on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, and leave a review. Let me know what you think. I hope you like what you're hearing. And if you do, let me know. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you next time on My Brain is a Wonderland. Bye-bye.